It's a very interesting uh, development to look uh, non-invasive into what is the body doing. And this is, for instance, their unique feature again of superconducting electronics, squids. We, we can use the squid to measure the magnetic fields generated by the human brain and by the human heart. However, there are other techniques which will do that, such as uh, functional magnetic resonance imaging, positron emission tomography. Uh, they will also give you source localization. Mag ma both magnetic resonance imaging and positron emission tomography tell you about chemical changes inside the brain which are associated with the activity. They don't give you any information about the activity itself. There have been very strong activities in, in looking at the magnetic, magnetic activity in the human heart, looking at fetal heartbeats. If we have a child, I mean, are as near as possible with our flux transformer to the maternal abdomen. So here is the heart that gives magnetic fields and the field we are going to measure is smaller than 10 to the minus 12 Tesla. So there are very small fields. So the surroundings, even if you are far from, from the cities, that's not enough to cancel all the disturbances. So normally we are in a shielded room. A shielded room magnetically is not like for electrical that it is in a cage of Faraday. No, the room which is made of mu metal and aluminum. And of course, uh, often you see also a, a contribution of the mother heart, but, but that is not that difficult to remove because you can always measure ECG simultaneously and then you know when the heartbeat of the mother is, you have a trigger so you can remove it. More difficult is if you have a twin or more children uh, simultaneously. There is another really very important application for superconductivity which is just now becoming to be known like a magnetic stethoscope. A stethoscope listens to the mechanical vibrations and this looks at the electromagnetic vibrations. It is what they call in the emergency room or emergency department triage, trying to decide, depending on the person's symptoms, what to do with them. And this will be a very valuable tool. The interesting thing is you don't even have to touch the patient, there's nothing invasive, and you're sending nothing into the patient. By scanning the heart with an array of squids in a time of uh, 10 minutes with a, a nine sensor array, or even only in less than two minutes if you had 36 sensors, um, you will know uh, with a sensitivity at the 90 or 95 percent level with the current technology which can be improved you will know whether or not that person is having a heart attack or has serious heart problems. Okay so so we're able to produce these squid systems we're containing as many as 300 squids to produce for this magnetoencephalography application in order to um, detect activity in the brain. There's envisaged practical application of such multi-channel squid helmets in the aviation sector. Aircraft controlled directly by our thoughts. Science fiction becomes textbook physics. The, the, the magnetic field falls off like one over distance squared the typical magnetic field that you detect is of the order of 0.1 to 1 picoteslas. The electrical activity in the brain can be modelled as an array of um, electric current dipoles. At the moment, and possibly for the foreseeable future, the squids that we have to use are based on conventional superconductors. With high temperature superconductors it's much more difficult to produce large numbers, all of which have the same properties, and they don't have the noise performance anyway. So, where is the role of high temperature superconductors in, in these types of applications? Here, because of all the cryogenics, you can only bring your squids within four centimetres of the surface of the brain.
So the signal to noise ratio is the signal generated by the by, by the brain divided by the by the noise floor, uh, the noise level of the squid in a in a one kilohertz bandwidth. Because we need to keep the low TC squid at a temperature of uh, 4.2 Kelvin. Depending upon the design of the squid, uh, we may only be able to get it to within one millimetre or so. Then the maximum signal to noise ratio, and it will be five or so. With our high TC squid, which is noisier, the signal to noise ratio will be smaller. But as we bring the high TC squid closer, when we get to within about half a millimetre, we get about the same performance. And then if we could bring our high TC squid within 100 microns of room temperature, is we would get a signal to noise ratio 25. And so we can see that by using a high TC squid, which we, all, we, we only need to cool it with liquid nitrogen, and we don't need as much radiation shielding to keep it at 77 Kelvin as we would do a liquid helium cool squid at 4.2 Kelvin. Because of that, we can bring it much, much closer to, to our sample, and therefore we can gain in signal to noise ratio, and therefore either do better measurements or look for sources which will generate smaller signals. My dream <laughs> would be you have your sapphire rod, uh, and, and, uh, but have a probe with a squid on the end of it, and somehow um, cool it. And, and, and being able to insert it much, much closer so that it could be, so that it could be used for operative, uh, used in operations to detect act activity inside the brain non-invasively.